Beloved, it is so good to be here tonight. It's just a short overview of our uh, history of our church. We know that we celebrate uh, 10 years of Ruach S Ministries. And uh, I want to welcome you and I hope you will enjoy this segment of a little bit of the history of the church, how the church came to be. So just before we start, I want to welcome my co-host tonight, um, the Honorable Reverend Don Ronhanger that is with us tonight. And uh, he's going to do the interview with me. Uh, actually, he's going to do the interview, so I welcome him. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our broadcast this evening. We are honored to have Apostle Lionel Esther with us from Ruach, the founder and senior pastor of Ruach S Ministries in Cape Town. And now, Apostle Lionel Esther is a third generation minister of the gospel. His father, uh, Pastor Donald Bester, was in ministry for 35 years. And he pastored the Ravensmith AFM Church for 22 years. And also the AFM in Marmersbury for two and a half years. But that wasn't all. He also pastored the church, the AFM Church in Kamasdal in Namibia for seven and a half years. After his retirement, uh, Pastor Donald uh, Bester uh, joined the Goodwood AFM. And uh, he served there for another 22 years. And this is not a surprise that uh, Apostle Lionel Bester found himself in ministry because this is a legacy that needs to go on. And I, I'm so honored to be the person that interviews uh, Apostle Lionel Bester this evening. And we hope that you can enjoy this uh, short uh, um, interview with us and get an uh, insight into the ministry uh, of Ruach S Ministries in Raitapa, Cape Town. Uh, now, Apostle, my first question to you is that when did you realize that you have a call from God on your life? Um, well, uh, can I say this? I was always aware of the call of God upon my life, even from a, as a young child. But when the call was certain and sure was when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and it hit me like thunder. But the main thing is I never responded to the call. Because when you grow, grow up in ministry and you see sometimes what happened in ministry, um, how pastors are treated and how people are behaving in the house of God. And you're always under fire whether you're right or wrong. And uh, not really much of a preach appreciation, I didn't really like the call of God upon my life, and I didn't really enjoy it. But in the year 1986, the Lord began to deal with me and speak to me, and uh, I went to Bible school, but when I went to Bible school, I still went to Bible school under protest. I went for myself not to go into ministry. It was not my plan to go into ministry. It was just to equip myself for ministry. But the problem is when you equip yourself, you want to have an outlet. And the other problem is when you start praying, and especially praying in the Holy Ghost and start fasting, then the resistance that you build up is breaking down. So in 1994, we went on a crusade in New Orleans. New Horizon uh, in the Neisner area and while we were there I put the Lord before a challenge I said Lord I will never go into full time ministry unless you show your supernatural power at that time I saw the sick being healed I saw other people being set free but supernatural power <clears throat> when the cripple walk and the lame walk and there was a man that had arthritis so when we pray in a few minutes God raised him up he was unable to walk 
So I had to let go and surrender to the will and the purposes of God. Fantastic. Um, as Apostle was just mentioning these things that happened to him in his life, I can recall that uh, past, his pastor, Donald Pester, his father had a strong anointing for deliverance on his life. And this is just one of uh, the giftings that uh, the Lord has uh, given uh, Apostle Anna Bester. And I just want to ask him, uh, because according to his testimony and people that know him, he was, he was in ministry when he started out, but also he was very active in the mission field and in the northern provinces of our country. He held many, many crusades. I just want to ask him uh, what, what was the main attraction to the crusade in the northern part of our country? One of the main reasons that I love the northern part of our country, I love the people, the Benda people, the Shangan people, they wonderful people, they open their hearts, but the, the main thing is why I would love to go to the northern province and the part because the doors on my part wasn't open. Number one. So nobody invited me to come here, so I went there. But let me tell you, that shaped my life and my ministry. And that is where I experienced the miraculous, the supernatural power of God. I saw the anointing, blind eyes, deaf ears, miracle souls came into the, into, unto the Lord through supernatural mandate and power. We saw territories being taken by the supernatural power of God. That's why I'm, I love those areas because it was not just about preaching. It is where God had to show himself mighty and strong on our behalf or on my behalf where the Lord had to manifest his power because we had to go into demonic territories where um, witches and wizards rule and reign for eons of times and for long time. So you cannot go in to those territories unless you've been soaked in prayer and heard the voice of the Father. Thank you, Apostle. What is so significant about uh, the ministry of the Apostle is, is the anointing upon his life to, for deliverance and healing. As a, as a person who grew up in the AFM for most of his life, the Lord has really touched Apostle. So he, when the Lord called him, he established Ruach Es Ministries. And at this point in time, I just want to ask Apostle that where did the name Ruach Es Ministries originate from? The name Ruach Es Ministries, Ruach, means the breath of God. And because I'm a firm believer in the power of God, without this move of the Holy Spirit, there is no power. Amen. So when the Lord implanted that word into my life, and we added something, and fire. Now fire means E-I-S-H. It is in the Hebrew form, it means fire. So where there's a move of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit is always evident. It is always present. And I love the presence of the Lord. Without the presence of the Lord, there's no power. There's no anointing. And it's fruitless and useless to minister. Amen. One of the things that really characterized uh, Apostle's uh, leadership as a minister of this ministry is that he's actively involved. The church didn't start out with a great number of people, but it started off with a small number of people, and today we can account for 100 members in our congregation. And when the ministry started out, Apostle even was part of the worship team, and he also set up the sound system himself. And I just want uh, uh, Apostle to explain to our viewers how important it is to, to lead from the front and not just expect uh, people to, to do the work for you. But the great example of the set for himself and the discipline, and that has translated onto the members of the church, that when you come to the church, you, you're here to serve, but he, he himself is a servant of the Lord. Can Apostle just tell us 
in the starting uh, years, in the starting years of the ministry, how difficult it was to 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 work as as ordinary worker as well as lead the church. Well, um, beloved, it's not easy, especially when you have to be most pastors and preachers. They have the privilege of. Uh, through the years of having um, sound already been set up to them and and when we started off I'm not a singer but I had to play the guitar I'm not a guitarist but I know how to play and uh, I love not singing I love worship amen and I love singing in the Holy Ghost because I experience a supernatural dimension of power that's been activated and release so part of our ministry is active in worship we love prayer as well prayer is a foundation and the power and the move of the spirit is part and the life of the house of god and of this church amen one of the things that is very evident in ruach es ministries um, is the fact that uh, signs wonders and miracles is part of our worship we have a powerful worship team that usher the people of God into uh, into the anointing almost every weekend. And Apostle himself, he is very fond of worship. He will, spoke, he will speak about worship uh, at, in our nine o'clock slot. So please don't uh, don't go away from from our broadcast. But with the testimony that the Apostle has, has just given us, I would like to ask him about some of the highlights in the ministry of Ruach is so far. You could, if you could just share uh, with us some of the things that he has experienced as a minister, as an anointed person of God, a person of God called to do signs, wonders, and miracles. Um, just before I answer that question, I just want to tell you how this ministry came into being because what happened was that I love traveling. I would go on the road for eight, nine months and minister for three months almost every day with a one week break and sometimes three times a day. And by the end of the year, my body was so tired, I was physically exhausted. But I love that part because of the supernatural power of God. So uh, through the years, as I went and minister to, into different places, what happened was that there were people or prophetic voices that gave me uh, instruction from the Lord that I have to start the church. Because the Bible said, for those who have been given much, it's required much. So I didn't start the ministry just to be, uh, have a name or be on my own. I would prefer to sit under submit under somebody, but because of the call and the anointing of God, I had to obey the voice of God. So part of that was obedience to the word of God. Otherwise, I would never have started with Ruach as ministry. It wasn't my own uh, idea. This was from the heart of God. And just to tell you, um, through the years we experienced a couple of times in our services that people died. Um, some had severe heart attacks, almost died in our services in Ruach Es. We had two testimonies of people that died during the service. But by the grace of God, God raised them up by the power and of the might of God. Then there's other uh, instances through the years where I went into meetings in, in Georgia, prayed for a boy that was eight years old, uh, couldn't move, couldn't speak. Um, there was, he was unable to help himself. He was carried into the service like a baby. After prayer, God raised him up. I saw greater miracles, ankles being formed. I saw blind eyes being opened. So this is part of the supernatural power. I saw people they carried into a caravan, um, laid hands on him. The power of God came upon him, HIV AIDS, couldn't walk, couldn't speak. God raised him up by supernatural power. So I'm so grateful for the hand of God 
But I'm excited that I will see more of the things of God. And the last testimony that I want to bring is at one time in Toyondo at the church of uh, Pastor Jacob Netsiuzi. And as I minister, one night there were six blind eyes in one service. And the Lord ministered to me and said, don't minister to this one first because it's going to be tough. So I went to the others. And all the blind eyes opened and I went to this last one that I didn't minister to first. And it took a while, but the Lord opened his eyes. So I'm grateful that God is still healing the sick, raising the dead, but also saving souls. Because the purpose of signs, wonders, and miracles is the pulling and the drawing card for souls to be saved. When miracles are happen, it is easy for people to submit to the Lord of Lords and to the King of Kings. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Uh, in the course of this year, we had an outreach in uh, Belvini, Elsie's River. There was a lady in, our, in, in the church service that evening that her sister had stage four cancer and she was in hospital. Because she couldn't talk for almost a week. And then the Apostle prayed, uh, the, the woman actually stood proxy for that lady. And after the Apostle prayed, he said to her, after an half an hour, you can call the hospital. And believe me, after half an hour, the lady called her sister and the sister herself came to the phone to speak to her sister. That is what God can do. Also in Bridgetown last year, the incident that the apostle spoke about just now, a lady died inside in the church while uh, we were worshipping. An apostle prayed and that woman came to life. It happened in May 2019. An apostle, just on, on that note, how important it is for the church of today to actually portray uh, the glory and the power of God because a lot of churches don't experience uh, these uh, miracle signs and wonders. Can you just tell our viewers why is it important that God manifests himself in our time this day? Um, it is very important in this day because of the backsliding of the church and also of the fact that people mock the church. They do not regard the church as something that is valuable for society today. But there's one thing that I know if you, we want to change cities in South Africa, Man. then it basically means the power of God must manifest. Miracles, signs, and wonders must happen. It is a drawing card. It's a calling card. It tells people that Jesus is still Lord. Amen. Jesus still is yesterday, today, forever be the same. That's why it is utmost important. The drunkard will be saved. The drug addiction, the drug addict will be saved. The gangsters will be saved. Why? Because they see a supernatural manifestation of the power and of the glory of God. Amen. So true. Uh, 2020 was a challenging year for the church. A lot of our churches had to close. Some of our churches are not even back uh, together uh, at this point in time. But I can tell you, for the entire uh, lockdown period, the Apostle was live uh, every evening at 9. I just want to ask the Apostle to speak to the church in this uh, testing time of 2020, where we had a pandemic. And a lot of people have lost hope, some people lost their jobs, some ministers uh, actually uh, also succumb under the pressure. Because we, we know about two uh, instances uh, where ministers of churches have died because of the pressure. I just want Apostle to speak a word um, to our people, especially leaders in the church, who found that 2020 is challenging and some may be uh, casting doubts or whether you should continue with ministry. But just listen to Apostle who throughout this lockdown have stood firm in the ministry of the word every night and he's got some testimonies to prove that and I just want him to encourage ministers that are feeling the punch of this pandemic to keep on and 
serve God and also minister to people as far as possible. I want to encourage all the ministers of the gospel and of the kingdom of God to continue pressing in because God's word cannot fail. It is important to know that he's still a miracle working God. He's still in the multiplication business. He's still in the acceleration business. Just because of lockdown, it doesn't mean that we cannot go forward. Yes, some of you are when, uh, really went through hardship in finances. But I tell you right now, the God of breakthrough will break forth in your life. Don't give up. Stand upon the truth of the word of God. Believe the word of God. We thank God tonight that he came to give us life and give it abundantly. What as ministries didn't came because of the will of men. I would never have started it, but because of the word of God for my life. Otherwise, I would be responsible for what God has given me and be judged accordingly. And that's why, beloveds, in 2020, it is the 12th month. May the Lord God that call you by his great name empower you, prosper you. May the supernatural power be activated upon your life. May you never lack anything from today. I speak into the atmosphere, whatever helper you need in your life, that God will speak supernaturally. Your name will be heard in the nighttime, in the dream, or even during the day, that your name will be mentioned in the ears of your helper. Why? Because God has ordained a helper for Joseph. And that and that Yalpa's name was Pharaoh. Where there's a Pharaoh, there will be a Joseph. Where there's a Joseph, there will be a Pharaoh. Why? Because God has already prepared the way for you. Do not give up. Stand upon the word of God. Trust God today that you will come forth in power and in might. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. For those viewers that, doesn't, that don't know it, that the Ruach is a ministry, is, a, is an apostolic and a prophetic house. <coughs> and we believe that those unctions of the Holy Spirit is, is prevalent in our church. And finally, I just want to conclude by asking Apostle that what is the Lord telling him now? And what is the vision for, for Ruach is ministries for 2021? Um, our vision for 2020 was actually short-circuited. What we wanted to do was in, we started in Belvini, then in Belha, then the lockdown came. We wanted to go into every area of the Western Cape. And uh, my heart is that we will, in 2021, go into every area of the Western Cape at least once a month with supernatural power, with supernatural dimension, believing God that souls will be saved, the power of darkness will be broken and destroyed over those who are captive, and God will show himself mighty and strong on our behalf. I believe God for that. And next year, I believe God in around about September, uh, October, or at somewhere around there I believe God to have a citywide crusade and trusting God for supernatural things to happen and that South Africa or the Western Cape will be shaped by the power and of the might of God and I won't go into the next phase because our time is running out thank you very much Apostle so we really thank you we appreciate your presence to our viewers, I just want to tell, thank you for listening in. Uh, we will uh, go on live stream at 9 o'clock uh, tonight. And also, every Sunday at 9, you can live stream through Ruach Esh, our Facebook page. But we have great plans for next year. We also, our worship team will also be launching their, their first CD. And I can promise you, it's going to be a CD that really will shake Cape Town and the rest of the world. But for now, thank you very much. God bless you.